How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday, first Monday of the 2026 new year. Hope everyone's having a good one out there so far. Uh, it is about 11.38 a.m. California time here, January 5th, 2026. Uh, latest activity shows a 3.3 earthquake down across South America here. Looks like along the uh, Prue Trench. Also getting a line of movement from the Kuril Kamchatka all the way down here to the Izu Trench. So this is some newer activity stirring up here this morning. Keeping an eye on this area because we've seen quite a bit of uh, swarming going on there in the uh, last couple months or so. I'll make sure I turn my ringtone off. That's my uh, EBS ringtone. <laughs> kind of startles me at times, but I'm kind of kind of used to it. Uh, so we do got to watch this area. Definitely a lot going on here uh, that could be leading up to something bigger. There is a number of regions out here across Japan and roughly about the southern end here of the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. That's fairly well primed for some, uh, well, some big mega quake activity. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, looks like some movement further up into Alaska as well this morning. Got uh, some aftershock sequences there up in the uh, well, close to the four range. Latest shows a 3.8 out here this morning. Southern Yukon, right around the Alaska border. Actually, it looks like it's on the uh, yeah, it's on the uh, Canada side here. Of course, this is where that seven pointer struck here a number of weeks back. Still seeing some aftershock sequence there. Uh, down the coast here, Washington, Oregon. Nothing really new to report across that area. Same for Northern California. Uh, there is one earthquake right on the San Andreas Fault. Outside of San Francisco here, two-pointer. Uh, but aside from that, the Bay Area looks pretty quiet. we got a lot of rain coming in. Another large, strong, low-pressure system moving in over Northern California. Uh, I tell you what, you know, a lot of rain falling out here in Southern California as well. So if that doesn't get the uh, fault systems moving out there, I, I just don't know what will. Not uh, hoping for a big one, but you would think here with all this uh, time that has passed for uh, pressure... In terms of accumulated slip out here, strain, it uh, should be happening out here fairly soon. Uh, nothing major going on there across the uh, park field section. Looks like most of the movement halting there at the end of the creeping section before it turns into the um, uh, park field section right here. Uh, just a couple smaller microquakes out there today in California. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, like really, it's not all that active down here in Southern California. This is like day number two here of it being relatively quiet down across Southern California. For this area, specifically Southern California, we should see about 30 to 40 earthquakes of uh, small magnitudes there under 2.5. And we're only at 16. Uh, super duper quiet. Uh, one earthquake being reported there this morning for a 1.5. Let's see if they worked on any of those over the weekend looks like they've added a couple earthquakes there over the weekend some of the ones that uh, you know were not uh, showing up here on the charts uh, but I don't think they reported all those because there was quite a bit more than what they're showing there on their uh, USGS map we'll go back over here and check this out real quick uh, see if we got anything new stirring up this morning not a whole yeah not a whole lot this is um yeah, this is current, it looks like. A little earthquake there last or late afternoon yesterday. There's a 1.5 further down south here, about 2 o'clock in the morning. So we'd have to check this. Um, maybe this graph right here may have picked it up. About 2.20 in the morning. Or, yeah, 2.20 would be 3.20 here, uh, mountain time. And that's going to be that little 1.5 right there. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on there for now. No big earthquake swarm, really nothing of any major interest there for now. Uh, oil field still doing their thing out there. A lot of quake activity. Now we got two earthquakes here in the last 24 hours uh, around the uh, Kentucky area. 2.6 and a 1.8. A little active out here in the last couple days. Uh, it does sit kind of in a zone where uh, there's been historically some decent sized earthquake activity out there south of Knoxville. Uh, let's check this out real quick. Let's go over here to, uh, and it's not going to be a lot. 
Um, but I want to check out the historical model here on this Monday and see what we got there for large earthquake activity around the uh, Kentucky and Tennessee area, aside from, you know, the typical New Madrid seismic zone over there, which we know always gets some big earthquakes. But I want to see what's over here across this area. So I pulled up uh, 3.5 and above. Since records have been kept, we don't need the New Madrid seismic zone over here. We know there's some big earthquake activity that has struck out there in 1811, 1812. Um, I'm looking at this area here, south of Knoxville, and kind of in that zone where, where the uh, earthquake activity has been occurring. It's within this zone right here. Uh, looks like 1973 had a 4.7 here. Uh, largest magnitude specifically in, just want to get this zone right here see what we got um, looks like a 5.2 that's a little bit further to the east you know periodic earthquake activity uh, it's a main ones over here around New Madrid and down here across the um, uh, South Carolina area that can get some some large damaging earthquakes of course I didn't cover everything out here this if I were to cover this you'd see that there was um, I believe an upper six or even a, a um, lower seven magnitude in that area let me fix that real quick so we can see yeah there's been some big earthquake activity down here uh, obviously some earthquake activity up there around Knoxville in the Kentucky area and Tennessee but down here man look at this seven pointer back in 1886 yeah, that's a big one man that's uh, definitely a big earthquake most recent one down here that's above 3.5 looks to be back in 2008 a 3.6 so one of these days you know a big one could hit back out here again um, the reoccurrence intervals here are a little tough to uh, figure out when it comes to this area because it's not like the uh, you know the west coast out here where we have always got pressure building up this is a lot different out here as far as these uh, intraplate fault systems but History shows us that we can get some big earthquakes out here east of the Rockies. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. We'll check out the Earthquake 3D Globe here real quick. Um, I don't see anything major going on. Still some af uh, aftershock activity there in the uh, Mexico area from that 6.5 a couple days ago. Nothing really new to report across South America. Yes, there's a handful of earthquakes, but really nothing of any... A major uptick this is pretty much common on any given day uh, one earthquake north here in Iceland a little little activity over here across the Mediterranean today looks like the largest there 4.1 uh, USGS not really reporting that uh, looks like it could be uh, looks like around the Egypt area maybe No, further. That's further down over here. So, um, possibly along this plate boundary here, it looks like. Anyway, nothing big. Just uh, some smaller quake activity. Looking to see where all the newer movement happening at right now. And it's definitely uh, starting to notice this filling in here across the western side of the Pacific plate and the adjacent uh, Filipino plate here. This. This one here showing quite a bit of activity there through the Philippines right now, including a 4.1 coming in. Uh, that earthquake just coming in in the last 15 minutes or so. Some newer, renewed, deep activity across the Tonga Trench. So if you look, you got a lot of north, center, and southern portion here of activity. Uh, so this could fill in this area with some larger movement today this area has been a little quiet across the Solomon Islands eastward to about Fiji let's see when our last earthquake was out there a decent size uh, not a whole lot here in the last week it looks like Port Villa northward to about the Solomon Sea there should be filling in this is kind of a quiet zone the seismic gap zone that I like to look for um, in terms of maybe spotting out some areas of interest a little quiet there so that could fill in either way you know decent size uptick uh, happening right now across this area of the planet pretty quiet out across the east but uh, we'll continue to watch that for as the eastern pacific goes 
Uh, and Hawaii out here, let's see what we got. We do have some movement stretching out towards the Loihi Seamount. Nothing big. I was just looking at their website here, and everything is still down. You know, I heard they're getting some snow out there, but, uh, it, but I don't know if they're getting any snow at Kilauea Volcano. I mean, up around Mauna Loa, yes, but their data is still offline there from the 30th of December, so we're, you know, six days now. Almost seven days in terms of no current data in terms of the inflation charts also let's see the seismograph stations here see if these guys are working now these are still offline as well from the um, UTC time of the 31st so hopefully they get that up and running uh, I mean the only thing we have here is is their word and also webcam imagery up here uh, looks a little cloudy out there right now number of different uh, cameras here looks a little hot up there at the uh, crater area man I wish I could uh, I wish we had the inflation data out there looks rather cold there's a lot of steam c condensation going on there and that's from um, that's from the uh, oh, that's when that camera got destroyed. That's right. It's keeping its uh, last couple images alive there on the website. 138 degrees Fahrenheit. That was uh, interesting video. How that came in and just destroyed that camera. I heard they're working on putting a new one in along with some sound, so we'll be able to hear sound coming in there from uh, from an eruption, which is pretty neat. But uh, we'll keep checking back on that. We should be getting close to another eruption there soon across Kilauea Volcano. Uh, space weather activity real quick. Not uh, not so much happening out here, folks. These guys still have their flare threat a little bit elevated. I am i don't see any of that happening there as far as an X flare. Uh, we'll be lucky if we get some C flare activity. Uh, there's some magnetic loops happening out here on the far side. Uh, these will soon to be far side sunspots. See this looping up and around. Uh, but really nothing of any major interest out there. If you look at the complexity model in terms of magnet magnetic structure, uh, you know, what you want to see is pretty much, um, you know, the positive or negative polarities here along with different other colors indicating the opposite um, polarity. And that within a center portion of the sunspot, that would indicate complexity. This one here is relatively stable and simple. Uh, this one, these are simple as well. You would need a lot more intermingling here in between these two regions to uh, really stir up a flare. Uh, and I just don't see that right now. Uh, no major aurora activity in the forecast, although we did have some aurora activity stirring up last night out of the blue. It was not forecasted. That's because. Uh, the BZ component here of the interplanetary magnetic field was wide open for some reason. I mean, there was nothing really coming in either. That just allowed any anything that's out there to come in and uh, stir up um, the magnetosphere there and create the aurora activity. Definitely a little odd. Uh, so right now, flare threat, probably about a 1% chance or less in flare around 30% maybe 40 percent chance it's, it just looks fairly minimal no major auroras there forecasted for now quick glance here at any close approach asteroids to the planet well let's take a look not a whole lot i mean for at least the next five ones here next five uh asteroids looks pretty distant lots of millions of miles there in the closest approach so there's a pretty big one right there, but that's almost 3 million miles away coming in today. Uh, and it looks like all of these are newly discovered. All right, Storm Prediction Center. We've got one more big storm out here across the West Coast, and that's going to dry out up there, out here uh, across California. There's our low pressure bringing in. It's been raining pretty heavy here for, oh, man, about an hour now uh, where I live at here in Northern California. That's going to continue to uh, looks like work its way south a little bit, bring some rain down to Baja, California. 
and then a colder storm up to, for the uh, Pacific Northwest. And then after that, things begin to dry out out across California and the West Coast in general. Massive high pressure will be uh, dominant there across the Eastern Pacific. And, you know, at this point, it's okay to have a couple weeks there of, um, of dry weather. You know, hopefully it doesn't stay that way because technically we still need to get some decent rain for February and March. Uh, those, are, uh, those are our wet months there. But, uh, yeah, there's high pressure that builds in here after um, little storms here for Monday and Tuesday. But high pressure dominant right there. Look at that. Building up over the Pacific Northwest here. Shooting everything uh, way north. We'll see what happens over here across the eastern portion of the country. I don't see anything major coming down as far as any, you know, major cold weather. It does look like uh, around the 15th or so we do get some. Maybe some cold temperatures out there. Let's see what we got. Um, yeah, but really not even that big of a deal. Warmer out here across the West Coast. Hopefully that's not going to be a blocking ridge there for the entire winter. Or for the remainder of the winter. we we'll have to watch that. It doesn't really want to budge at all. Anyway, we'll continue to watch this here. Enjoy the rain while we have it. Um, you know, it's, yes, it does cause a little flooding when we get it all at once, but uh, at the same time, um, you know, we need more than just a few inches of rain for the winter. This is not the desert out here in Northern California. I mean, Southern California area, San Joaquin Valley, I guess I could consider that the southwestern portion of the country, but up here, Sacramento northward, we, we, we uh, are a little bit greener up here. We should be getting... I think for around the Chico area, about 19 to 20 inches of rainfall for our winter months. And I picked up here, and it's going to vary around the area, but I picked up uh, I picked up five inches of rain from the previous systems there when the fog broke back in December. And I'm coming up again on another five inches of rain here uh, for these past few storms. So almost about 10 inches of rain, uh, which is decent, you know, but that's... Hopefully we still get more here for February and March. So, but, the, you know, a couple break, a couple uh, weeks break for dry, nicer, maybe some sunny weather. I'm, I'll take it. Definitely we will take it. All right, folks, um, uh, just a quick update on Chomper. He's still able to go to the bathroom there, as, um, as I stated in my previous update yesterday. Uh, not completely flushed, not completely past all the stones. He's still, you know not completely free flow so to speak uh, so just kind of watching this he's still on his amoxicillin and the prescribed pot uh, potassium citrate uh, which can help break down these stones that he's got there cal calcium something stones uh, but he is in good spirits he's eating he's drinking um, no negative stuff yet hopefully it doesn't happen hopefully it's all just positive from from here forward but he's not out of the woods yet so i'm just kind of watching him um and then we'll go from there but he does not like this rain so <laughs> he doesn't really have much of an area to uh run around in when there's downpours happening out here uh, he doesn't like the rain at all so i'm hoping for a little break th through the day today so i can get him out here in the field start walking around and but uh, I don't think that's going to happen today. It's just going to be a pretty steady rain event out here for Northern California. Looks like some snow up there above Chico into the mountains around Chester and whatnot. Here's a heavy band of rain coming in. So Anyway, have a good one, folks. We'll see you guys out here a little bit later for the uh, Monday night update. Have a good one. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.